D2DNY Real World HVAC Simplified Now In this video I have a Liebert Unit It's a Liebert DS Down flow Flow to discharge from the bottom So I got a Liebert DS here that's not working I'll be troubleshooting it Okay So compressor number 2 does not turn on doesn't matter what I do from the keypad or the icon display here doesn't matter what I do compressor number two does not turn on so I'm gonna be troubleshooting compressor number two stay tuned for that but before getting to the video if you have not subscribed subscribe I'll do so right now and uh, smash that bell icon so when I now upload videos like these we get them right away. Let's get into it. So my compressor number two, this is compressor number two contactor, and this is compressor number two in the bottom here. So it's not coming on. Uh, doesn't matter what I do from the ICOM. Uh, I, I, I go into to, um, I'm going to show you the compressor here. Can you see it? Okay. Doesn't matter what I do from here. The compressor will not start. I'm going to go into, go into the uh, service menu. And uh, so now I'm going to have to go into the schematic, the wiring diagram, and start checking things. All right. So we can see that compressor number one that's the, that's the back pressure and it's actually running uh, this is compressor number one contactor compressor number one so um, yeah so no matter what I do here I, I try to force the pump to force the pump down by manually pushing the contactor in when I do that the compressor runs as you can see you gotta be careful when you're doing this the amperage draw and the pressure is dropping so the compressor does work it does work manually um, so but I just can't get it to work no matter what I do here from the automatic position. So if I go back to the main screen, you can see that I'm doing 50% cooling only. That's it. All right, so let's get into troubleshooting. Okay, but um, before I get into the schematic, the wiring diagram, I'm gonna dig a little further. I'm gonna dig a little further. I'm gonna go into the uh, service menus once more. Am I getting that? And I'm gonna look at the switches, the safety switches. The safety switches for the compressors. So, compressor, compressor one, okay, 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 alright, so, compressor two, overload is active, okay, now let's see what corresponds to the schematic. And let's troubleshoot that because perhaps that's the reason I think that's going to be the reason why it's not running because of the overload situation here all right it says it's active this is active but it's because it's pumped down right now so the back pressure is low because it's pumped down I manually push the contactor and you know force the pump down so that's why low pressure is active all right so uh, you can see the pressures if I go back up
36 psi right now. All right, so let's look at the drawing. Compressor two, C two. Here is the overload, overload. <laughs> now we go back here. So this is a normal position of the high pressure switch. It's always closed down here. That's a connection. And from this switch, if this switch is normal, we will have power on U2. All right, because there's 24 volts coming back from all the way from this fuse right here. All right, and this is coming off the transformer right here. 24 volts. And this is a fuse block. So if uh, our fuse is good, which I'm going to check right now, there is the fuse block. So these green LEDs are indicators that the fuses are all good. If any one of those fuses, fuses are out, then the LED will not lit. So the fact that all the LEDs are lit, that tells me that all my fuses are good. And uh, so um, um, where was I? C2. So that's compressor, compressor contact number two. So we should have 24 volts coming here at U25. That's uh, terminal 33, uh, wire 33, and plug number eight. All right. So that 24 volts goes into the board. There should be. A, this is uh, input on the board, and uh, this there should be an LED beside of this that's light up at U25. So looking for U25 right here. LED is not lit. So no power is coming on the line. Let's look at uh, uh, let's look at um, U24. Okay, so if we get 24 volts right here, then uh, wire 33 and plug seven, uh, we should have 24 volts on U24, input 24, rather. Uh, U is an input on the board. Um, so U24. And then if we go further, as a matter of fact, U24 is your uh, compressor overload fault input. So if there's, no, if there's no 24 volts here, the unit will be in fault for compressor number two overload. Saying that over, compressor number two overload is open, or sometimes if we have a blown fuse up here, because the 24 volts can't get down, because the fuse is broken right here, so you will get a overload fault because there's no 24 volts on U24. So we'll look at U24. U24, that's 25 right here. Where is 24? 24 right here. And the LED is not lit. So I'm going to go back in here because I'm assuming that that alarm has been dis disabled. I'm gonna go back, look at my alarm set points. Um, where is it? Alarm set over here. Let's look for compressor number two, overload. Oh, I'm going too fast. There you go. Compressor one overload. Enabled. Compressor number two overload. Disabled. Let's see what happens when we go ahead and enable it. We are going to go into alarm right away. And now we would have known why compressor number two is not running. Right? Let's go down and re-enable that.
Right away we get an alarm. <laughs> Let's see what the alarm is now, shall we? Alright, so now we know we have to go and service and troubleshoot the uh, compressor overloads because uh, we know that the fuse is good, the fuse is good, but verify that, verify that, I'll get that, <laughs> fuse is good, we could tell just from the, uh, the LED indicators on the fuse block. So there is a connection, there is a connection here for your overload. I don't know you can see that. I'm assuming these two wires, this one right here, and this one right here is the switch. They have to be closed. Alright, because this right here is the overload setup. This is your overload right here. And they are they are going to be open if the compressor is drawing too much amperage. I don't think these are thermal. Are they thermal? Uh, perhaps they are, I don't know. Uh, this is a... Looks like we got a sensor that goes into the compressor right here. There's one wire here. And there's, okay, 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 so they are not... They are not... They are, not, they are thermal. Because this right here... This right here, these are two wires that goes into the compressor. These are your three-phase power. Right here. Line one, line two, line three. Okay, and then these two right here is your sensor in the compressor. If the compressor winding is getting too hot, it's gonna trigger these relays right here. Our overload, are these are relays? I think they are relays. Are they thermal switches? But um, in the event that uh, um, you're drawing, you're drawing uh, overcurrent on these right here, and if your uh, thermal switch inside the compressor is open, then we're going to be broken over here. Uh, let's, let's, let's examine this. So we got one wire. This orange wire here goes back into controls. And then we got this red wire. Goes into these um, switches right here. And I'm going to assume these ones are for current. High current draw. Okay. And so we go into these switches. There's one here. And then you have another one down here is jumped. It's in series. Let's zoom in. Yep. So it's jumped, so we're going in. Go through this switch right here, come around and we jump over here. Go to the other switch. And then out of the switch, we're going back out into out into your controls. So we're coming into this orange wire and we're leaving through this brown wire. Uh, so we got a combination of current and uh, thermal instead of compressor. Makes up the overload. So, now I'm assuming if I go across here and here, there'll be potential. Let's test. Got my meter. Turn this thing down because we got lots of, you know, I don't want to be shorting anything out. You could read the, the wiring here. Let me see here. Let me see if I was correct regarding the, what I was saying. So we got a motor thermostat right here. And then we got uh blah 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 blah. Where's the other one? Does it say current? Anyways, uh doesn't need don't let me zoom that in so you guys could read that you want to dig into it but for this video to shorten the video so that it's not too long I'm not gonna be digging into that I've already know I already know that you know one switch right here this is one switch is a thermal switch and I'm gonna assume that this is a, another thermal switch but it's based on current all right this is basically a thermostat inside the compressor two wires in and out and these two in series here 
either activated by um, more than likely it's going to be based on current draw because the line wire is going through them and based on current draw it's going to overheat and trip all right so let's uh i check a voltage from here to ground how do i going to do this let me pause okay so i found somewhere to put my uh test lead so i can you know work with my one hand and so before i check for the switches let's check for power which we should have power here so i'm gonna go here so i got 24 volts 25 volts got 25 volts over here so we're going through the thermal switch in the compressor we got 25 volts here and we got zero volts down there all right so apparently the problem lies here this is where this is where we're losing our power so if i if i was to go across this one and this one i would read potential because these are open for whatever the reason is i guess they are broken they're no good um this is the, this is the reason why the compressor is not coming on let's see this one right in the middle we got power here yep so the problem is actually this one the one in the bottom and this one up top here is closed so it's fine we got 24 volts coming here 24 volts coming here we got 24 volts coming here and we got 24 volts going over here but we're not getting 24 volts down here so this is the problem right here all right uh this is broken i mean a new it's wired up correct there's no other way to do it just in and out two wires can't mess that up so this is definitely just no good all right this piece right here is bad okay so just for test i'm gonna go ahead and bypass here and here if i take my test lead if i were to go let's see i'm gonna do this let's chuck this one in between here and then i'm gonna take this one and go right here should be 24 volts yep so this is open all right i'm gonna go ahead and bypass this just to test it test the compressor stay tuned these are magnetic guys magnetic so that one is already on there i'm gonna go carefully let's put this in the middle here and that should take care of the uh overload alarm let's see here if we have our inputs oh right away the compressor came on see that and we have our inputs 25 and 24. all right 75 percent capacity right away we can acknowledge this alarm right here we can clear it we can acknowledge it acknowledge it so it's cleared we got 75 percent capacity now before it was only getting up to 50 and we weren't seeing the alarm because it was disabled and so we have our inputs satisfied these two and uh, yeah 100 percent let's look at our pressures for compressor number two as a matter of fact <clears throat> This thing is low on oil as well. It needs some oil. Ah, that was rather easy. Uh, nothing too crazy about that one. So we'll do 20 amps in that compressor. Twenty amps, twenty-two amps, twenty-four amps, twenty-four amps. So we're running a little bit lower on amperage than the compressor number one, which is which didn't throw the fault. So I don't have any concern that I have a problem with the compressor, right? Why that uh, switch a trip, the overload a trip? 
everything the amperage looks pretty good um, we can check on the name tag for the running amps uh, 460 volts is this unit um, where is the running load amps I don't see it <laughs> we have a lock rotor but no running load amps oh that's crazy why did they do that I have no idea RLA maps um, as LRA there's no RLA I don't see any RLA where is my RLA uh, perhaps I'll find it on the name tag on the unit So we are well below our uh, RLA, all right? Yeah, so that's it guys. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you have not subscribed, do so right now. You know, videos like these comes up on a weekly basis. If you got questions regarding this Liebert unit, critical cooling, let me get you the schematic. Because if you're still around, you're special. You can pause the video if you want to screenshot this and practice all right there's a schematic everything you need to know is right there um yeah it's going let's go down and look at the transducers we're in service menu we're in service Oh wow, where am I? So we gotta replace that uh, overload on the compressor. Overload. This one here, I'm just gonna go ahead. I guess they both replace them in replace them in pairs. Closing this video off right now. All right, signing off. All, all level at the minimum right now. Liquid line side glass, liquid line dryer, liquid line solenoid, uh, TXV. Both TXVs right here. Uh, this one, all level is low on that one. The pressure on loaders. Here's one of your uh, pressure transducer. That's the low side. Yes, it's the low side. That's it. A low pressure transducer. High pressure cutoff switch. And I'm out.